All right, today we're talking about drones, which one you should buy, how to use them, and some FAA regulations that you need to follow. So one thing that you may not know about me is that I am actually a pilot. Well, a remote pilot. United States of America. That's an FAA certified pilot's license. Get wrecked. This means that I'm able to fly drones commercially here in the United States. At its core, modern drones use GPS and obstacle avoidance technology in order to make flying easier for beginners. But before you take off, let's talk about something that's really important here. Every country has its own set of rules for when flying drones. There are some countries that completely ban it, other countries that are a little more lenient. But you'll need to follow a set of rules if you plan on flying a drone here in the United States. For example, if your drone is over 250 grams, regardless of if you have a Part 107 license or not, like I do, you have to register that drone. This lets the FAA know that, hey, there's a drone in your possession, and if anything happens, you are responsible for that drone. Anything under 250 grams, you don't have to register. For example, this guy right here, this is the DJI Mini 2 that I've been using for years. I also use the DJI Mini 3 that I don't have on me right now. And DJI made this as kind of like a screw you to the man. It's 249 grams. Within federal regulation, I do not have to register this drone. You'll also need to follow some guidelines like flying under 400 feet AGL, AGL meaning above ground level. You've also got to stay within line of sight. You have to be able to see the drone from where you're flying and then avoiding places like airports and military bases, kind of like the common sense type of stuff. But we've got to say this because there are some people out there so always check your local regulations before you fly now let's move along to the the fun part here and that's choosing the right drone for you it can be a little overwhelming at times because there are so many drones in the market i personally use dji drones but it really comes down to the needs it really comes down to what you want to accomplish with these drones so let's kind of break down what type of drone is the right drone for you, depending on what you want to accomplish. First and foremost, we've got the compact drones. It's this guy right here. So this is the DJI Mini 2. I have not let go of this thing yet. I also work with the DJI Mini 3. It's actually probably the best bang for your buck drone that you can get that has all the high quality features that some of the bigger drones have, but just at a, a fraction of the size. I mean, look at this guy. That is pretty much it right there. For the DJI Mini 2, the DJI Mini 3 is just about the same size and it's under 249 grams. So again, you do not have to register it with the FAA, which comes at a $5 fee. They're affordable, they're beginner friendly, they're pocket sized if needed. You can, I mean, I've put this in a pocket before. It's bulky, but you can fit it in a pocket. The things that they won't have are stuff like shooting in log or different frame rates for shooting. You can only make the sensor so big for cameras as small as this. So, so depending on the megapixel, it won't be the highest quality photo, but I've actually taken photos with this and printed them out. But yeah, this is these are overall great. Like if you're really getting into it, especially as a hobbyist or as a beginner, these small lightweight drones would be the drones for you. So let's talk about drones for photographers and videographers that care a lot more about image quality. For content creators who are seeking high dynamic range and image quality, consider the DJI Mavic series. The DJI Air also falls in this category as well. These are a step up from the compact drones that we talked about previously. They weigh more than 250 grams, so you will have to register these drones but you get some more features to it. And for me personally, there are features that are worth it. These offer larger camera sensors, so they're great for high dynamic range. They offer better stabilization. They're, they do great in higher winds. And they've also got advanced flying modes like tracking and hyperlapse. These are great for stunning professional looking shots. Now these drones obviously are gonna cost a little bit more, but for the money that you're getting, and depending on the work that you're doing, it would be very much worth it. All right, let's talk about racing drones. This is not 
This is not my area of expertise. I, I do not plan on spending a lot of time on this uh, just because I don't I don't do FPV drones It's just not me. I've got a buddy here in town that does that he loves doing it and that's all fine and dandy But it, it's just not for me, but let's talk a little bit about it FPV drones are for those people that are adrenaline junkies and that want to fly their drones at breakneck speeds You can pull off incredible stunts with this and it's my understanding that this can get a little expensive because if you're not skilled enough, then you're gonna go crash after crash. Unless you buy a, a FPV drone, like a DJI drone, um, these you can build yourselves, but um, you have to buy these components and build it yourself and all that. It, again, it's not for me. If I ever needed FPV shop, I've got some buddies that can do it or I'll just get some stock footage or something like that. But for the most part, for the content that I create and for the clients that I have, I never really need an FPV shop. All right, so let's get to the most important part of this video, I think. I can't stress enough how important it is to follow the rules because these are things that if you break these rules, it can lead you to paying large fines on top of even some jail time. So please really do heed my words here. Listen to what I have to say because this is going to ensure that you're flying properly, that you're flying safely, and that you're making sure that you're being responsible, especially when you're around people. First things first, let's talk about maneuvering the drone. So practice in open areas that don't have trees or buildings or a lot of movement of people or cars. The more flight time that you have, the better you're going to be at flying the drone and instincts are going to kick in. So if you're ever in a scenario where you need to pull back because there's a helicopter nearby that's happened to me before, you know, it'll just, you'll be able to do it in no time, not even think about it. Now, one tip that I like to give out to people is to look out for your battery life. I know with the DJI drones, when your battery gets to a certain percentage, it'll start beeping very annoyingly so that you can bring your drone back to home and swap out that battery. You don't want to be flying this drone at 20% battery because if you drain that battery and it falls on a piece of property or on a person, then that's a lawsuit. That's something that you're liable for. Some honorable mentions with this is to not fly in bad weather, not fly in high winds, being mindful of obstacles like trees or buildings. I've got it all written out here because I don't wanna miss out on anything and I don't wanna to spend too much time on this. Um, and I'm specifically speaking for the US here. So I highly, I highly suggest that if you're in a different country, look up your regulations, look up what the law is there and take it from there. So let's jump into this real quick. So there are different airspaces that you need to respect and there are spaces that are a no fly zone whatsoever, restricted, you can apply to fly there and they're gonna 100% tell you, no, you can't fly here. Just to name a few off the top of my head, any national park you cannot fly in, airports, military bases, Washington DC, the whole district of Columbia is a no fly zone for obvious reasons. Why are you flying in a military base? For crying out loud, people, do not fly over stadiums. That's happened before. Pennsylvania man accused of illegally flying a drone over M&T Bank Stadium during the AFC Championship game now facing federal charges. The whole hovering drone, like if you're hovering a drone over somebody's head, that's a big no-no, people. That could injure somebody pretty badly. Now, some of these are, are common sense, of course, but these have to be said, okay? And as a remote pilot, part 107 pilot, I'm just, I'm just relaying the message. I don't want this to be taken away from me because of somebody stupid, you know? So DJI has a website where you can figure out a geolocation that you want to fly in and it'll tell you if you're good to go or not. There are some areas where you need to apply to unlock it. Um, you got to tell them why you're there and why you're flying. So more importantly, okay, let's talk about this a little bit. You cannot fly your drone commercially without a part 107 license. This guy right here. What do I mean about flying commercially? Well, I mean, if you're going to go out for a client or for the company that you work for, that is a no, no. You have to have a certain license in order to have that type of trade or sale or whatever it is that they call. You cannot work for somebody as a drone pilot without having that license just is what it is. 
I'm the messenger. Don't shoot me. Now, you can you can still fly as a hobbyist. So if you're going out and just capturing footage for your YouTube channel, for TikTok, for anything like that, if it's just personally for you, if it's fun for you and you're not making any money off of it, then by all means, you're good to go. But if you are interested in flying commercially, making some money off of this, then I highly encourage you to look after a paid course. You can see down below, I'm not affiliated with the, the Pilot Institute, but this is the course that I took. It's a little dry and can be a little boring, but it's definitely, I mean, it helped me because in order for you to get your part 107 license, you need to take an FAA certified test at a certified testing site and you have to score a certain percentage or you don't get the license. And yes, you have to pay for these tests. If you take the Pilot Institute course, you will learn a lot more about the rules and regulations to fly here in the United States. Uh, they make it super easy. You do it at your own time. You can do it within a matter of two weeks or you can do it within a matter of two years. It took me about four months to do it because I was just going through a lot of crazy life stuff at the time that I was pursuing my license. But when I went to go take my test, I passed it within 85. So that was great. All right, so this has been a long video, probably a lot of talking here, but um, drones are great, but they come at a learning curve and a whole lot of responsibility. By choosing the right drone, understanding its features and following safety guidelines, you will be well on your way to master the art of flying a drone. So I hope this video was inspiring to you. I hope it was informative. I hope that you got what you needed out of it. If you're here up until this point, congratulations, you have made it through my whole video. You get a good old pat on the back there. Go and buy yourself a cookie. You deserve it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. So please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you're notified when I post more videos and I will see you on the next video. Peace.